in the game. Yeah. Once again, Candy Teeth Radio, episode number five. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Wow. Um. I'm excited. <laughs> I see. I see a pattern here. I'm I see excited. a pattern. You're always excited. I'm always excited, but I'm a different kind of excited for five, though. That's cool. Each number is a different excited. Like, yeah. episode four excited is good. Episode five excited totally different. Yeah, this is more mellow excitement. So is it exponential? Um, I don't know what that means, but I'll say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it experiential? Is it ex- experimental? Transcendental? Or just mental? Dental? Don't say mental. Dental. <laughs> That's one of the rules. Is that a buzzword? It's a new rule. Dental. Just don't say it. Don't say family circus. <laughs> yeah. Don't say dentist. Did you see the family circus Christmas? Oh, it was great. It was great. What? I think it said something about, like, hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did see the one you posted, though, on, on our family circus episode. Clip. Mm-hmm. It was all the kids. You saw the Christmas tree in the background. And oh, mom's no. in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. And all the kids were standing there, coming up to mom. And they said... What do you want us to do ma- now, Mom? We're bored playing with our Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! I'll kill every one of those kids. <laughs> that was it. That it's, was the that was the comic. Dude, it's so not good. Well, and the it's thing good. is, is I don't know why the parents don't go ballistic or postal would be a better word because uh, they've been giving those kids Christmas presents for what forty five years or something like that, fifty years. <laughs> yeah, and they're still ungrateful. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> little fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do for Christmas, Jeff? Um, uh, we went to uh, Zayna's sister's boyfriend's parents' house. Wow. <laughs> Zayna's sister's yeah, boyfriend's it was a, parents. It's it's closer than it seems when, I, <laughs> when you spell it out like that. Okay. It's all good. You mean um, you know the people closer than it seems? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I've only met a few times. They're really cool. They're really nice. That seems like when I'd be sitting in a chair with some food and just, like, quiet in a corner. That's what I do in my family's house. When it's that man. At your family's house? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I was up on the table, you know, wearing my hand, dancing. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. No, it was good. It was really fun. They're really nice. Um, uh, Tom is... Rena, the sister. Her boyfriend's name is Tom. His brothers were in town, from out of town. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Wait a yeah. minute. I want to go through that whole thing. You got to rewind that part <laughs> just... if you want to really know who, who these people were. Sorry. I just say good next time. <laughs> How was your Christmas? It was great. Good. It was Thanks. good. Next. Yeah. <laughs> mine was good too. All right. Yeah, mine was good. Man, you know what I did on Christmas though? It was kind of funny. Well, I didn't actually do this on Christmas, but so. I live on a boat. It's technically a yacht. I get to say, I got to remember to say yacht because it has a whole different class, right? Boat, you think something small. Plus, the yacht club will find you if you don't say yacht. If I don't perpetually say I live on a yacht. The Plus, yacht it sounds you. way cooler. Listen to your cool. uh, little, uh, you know, radio show there, Daniel, and uh, we heard you talking about your boat. You're not a member of the boat or no, club, no, like, are you? We heard you talking about your boat. Ooh. Because it's wow. a swear word. They'd say quiet boat. Cringe. Uh-huh. I saw it from the road the other day. It looked badass. Oh, it is. It is. It looked like some Miami Vice type shit. Totally. Yeah, it is. I, yeah, yeah. We could do that. We could do some Miami yeah. Vice up in there. That's what it looked like. We got a room called the Party Deck. The party yeah, alligator. Deck. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm I'm pretty, pretty damn good at working on houses. Like, I understand houses and all of their systems and everything. But boats are still kind of new to me, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I got this furnace. And it's a really nice feature. I got this furnace on the boat that's a... Uh, it burns diesel, okay. and it's a hot, it's a hot water forced air furnace. So the furnace, the burning diesel, heats up hot water that runs in tubes and goes all over the boat. And then each different location has a little box that has a fan that blows air over these hot water uh-huh. tubes. Then that's like forced air. Okay. So the furnace has been a little finicky. It's been getting like these air bubbles, and you know, it coughs out or whatever. And so, you seen Christmas Story? Yes. Yes. You know when the dad wrestles that damn furnace? Yeah. That's what I've been like. I've been like climbing down in the basement. I'm like <laughs> sitting there. We're sitting around and like everything's all warm and toasty. And then cough, sputter, 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 and like the furnace dies. And I'm 
Frazzle, 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 I'm climbing down in the furnace room, man. And I, I had to actually play that. I had to pull it up and let that clip exercise my demons. Because uh-huh. I don't even say, I just play it cool. I just like, I keep the total straight face. Yeah, cool. And I, just, and I just go down in the furnace room again, bleed those air bubbles, do this or that. I just keep the straight face. But so I had to pull up that clip. I had to... I had to look oh, yeah, up. watch it. I had to watch it like four That's times funny. in a row. <laughs> and I just pointed to it. I showed Rachel. Right. I just pointed to it. I'm like, "That's me. <laughs> this is everything I'm going through right now. Is this man?" Yeah. Oh, but my, it's anyway, horrible. My, my Christmas was great. Yeah. Christmas was wonderful. Spent time with my children. Good, because otherwise hilarious. you don't want to be compared to the dad from Christmas Story. No, that was my only comparison. Good. <laughs> was the f- furnace fighting. Other than that, it's all good. But I got a new fuel pump on the way, so I had to order it from some like special automotive racing. Supply store? Huh. Like, hey, like I have Michigan? a yacht, and I need a pump. Uh, what is a pump? Fuel pump. Fuel pump for my uh, I don't furnace. I don't anything for like, you. Well, you well, called the right place. It's a specific on a country, right? I opened it up, and like, you can see the thing. I see the part. And so when you look up where to find this part, they're the only people in the U.S. that even have it. It's like okay. some auto racing store in Michigan. So That's like, so random that they would have it. Don't ask me, man. I just wanted no. the thing. I get it. Order two. I'm just looking to keep warm. It's cold outside. <laughs> I live on water. I did a Jewish Christmas. Nice. What does that mean? Uh, I went to Chinese food. (laughs) (laughs) Just like a Christmas story. (laughs) Yep. Just like a Christmas story. It was real good, too. Uh, I've never been to it. Szechuan? Szechuan. I don't know. I don't know if that's really what it was. Is it like, do you give these little pancakes, little crepes? Yes. Mm -hmm. What? You make those Chinese crepes? I didn't know about that shit. I'm old. How long ago? (laughs) How long ago? I, do you know how long ago I could have known about that? Did you use the plum sauce? Yes. Uh huh. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So good. And then put some salt melts in there and then rolled it up. <laughs> some salt melts. <laughs> Turned it into a Chinese burrito and it was super delicious. It's like a Chinese chow- Christmas burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese Christmas chow mein burrito. It was insane. And the place was just popping out of control. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I got Thai food takeout for Christmas Eve dinner. Ooh. And uh, I went in there and it was totally dead. Oh, really? Yeah, it's crazy. Weird. Let's go pick it up. Nobody in there. <laughs> that was a different thing for me, though. Yeah. But yeah. I do that every time, man. <laughs> it's really good. I'm thinking about it right now. Usually we go skiing, but there was no snow. Mm-hmm. And my mom had to go to town, so... It's kind of like, well, whatever. We already had Christmas at my grandma's old folks' home. Uh-huh. And uh, Christmas at my mom's house. Uh-huh. Before Christmas. Before Christmas? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I had three Christmases. Before Christmas. Two Christmas Christmases and then one Jewish Christmas, yeah. Right. <laughs> so what did you do on Christmas? Okay. That's what we did, the Jewish Christmas on Christmas. Oh, okay, got it. Do you do Hanukkah too, or just the Jewish Christmas? Uh, Hanukkah is one of the most overrated. <laughs> like, everybody thinks Hanukkah is the big Jewish thing, but it's not. Oh, do you hear a voice? Because it's not my voice right now. But. Is it Jerome? No, no, no. Oh. It's whoever just told me that story. Um, we're going abstract. Oh, that, that was just like a. That was a dictaphone. That was just like a digital recorder. Like somebody yeah, told yeah, you something. Yes. And you were just like repeating yeah, exactly that exactly thing in their that. voice. Got it. And that somebody will remain nameless. <laughs> and remain Jewish. <laughs> 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 Unless you name them and then they get, you know, excommunicated or whatever. If you name who? If you tell them, if you say who it was. If you called somebody if out, I call them out for talking trash on Hanukkah. Yes. They would just they get, get booted from the Jewish faith. Oh, I see. They're out. You're out. Is that how it works? Yeah, you got to be Catholic after that or something. That's it's Mormon, horrible. <laughs> Isn't it? Wait, you can't be a Mormon if you talk trash on Hanukkah? What? No. I bet you you could be. You are. They encourage but... <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> that makes you Mormon. <laughs> These religions just freak me out. Yeah, no. It gets tangled up. It's all it's all a web of lies. It gets tangled up. The stories get tangled up. It gets a little yeah. It gets a little hectic. Well. Enough about Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, let's move on. That let's sounds move. like a boring one. It sounds like this Christmas was just like, went through it. That's what it felt like, too. Mm. It's over. 2014. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I noticed a, an interesting thing. It was like a little light bulb thing that I used to actually physically feel different on holidays. Yeah. Like the energy in the oh, air yeah. felt different. It yeah. was like, whoa, man, it's Thanksgiving. That. Oh, man, it's Halloween. Oh, it's Christmas. And like, I think I'm, I might be just getting older or something, but like all of a sudden, I think it's changed. It's just another day. Yeah. It was Christmas Day, and I was like, yeah. I, I, I don't feel that spark. I don't feel that electricity in the air anymore. Dude, we used it to, used to be tangible. Well, that was the thing about the grandma I do. going to the old folks' home. I like it. I like it, too. I, I totally like it. But yeah, it was like, you want it. It wasn't there, you know? Yeah, that's how it was going to the old folks' home. Like, uh, I'm always mad about going to the old folks' home. Because mm-hmm. it just smells like people waiting to die mm. for the holidays. Ugh. And like a dude just shot himself like uh Are you serious? What? Yeah, like a month ago. And then like all these other people on their hallway died and stuff, and then you're like, Oh yeah, let's go. Merry Christmas. Um, do you think they should even allow guns in the old folks' well, I was home? Like, I don't think they do though. <laughs> you like snuck it in style. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, but I don't know. After I go there I would be like, I don't think that's that weird. <laughs> right. After you go there and like after you go there for Christmas then you'll like get it because i was looking for that i was looking for a gun <laughs> Jeez, my uh my aunt was telling me a story that she took the kids uh christmas caroling through the halls of an old folks home and some old lady huge lady like fills up the doorway like her hips are as wide as the door yeah comes out and starts yelling it's like seven o'clock and she's like i called the police ah. they're too loud i'm trying to watch my programs like, um, are you kidding me? That lady? <laughs> that lady? Hell yeah. Merry Christmas. Out in the hallway screaming and yelling. I'm trying to watch my TV. <laughs> I'm an old lady. <clears throat> Too much, man. People get wrapped up. Man. So what do you do if you're the dispatcher on that one? You know what I'm saying? Because you know some crazy old lady, and she's like, These kids are singing Christmas songs out in my hallway! You know, like... The, it's 7 o'clock at night? <laughs> like, the, the person who was taking this call is like, gotta be like, um, Okay, man, we'll send an officer over as soon as we can. Right. You know what? <laughs> it's, I mean, but it's got to be the equivalent of, like, if you can do this as a 911 dispatch person, the equivalent of, like, balling up the, you know, the post-it note and throwing it over your shoulder. <laughs> totally. But, you know, she you know, she was just trying to get her sleep. You know that? <laughs> yeah, you know, I get it. It's important. It's important. So I have this article here from the, the Daily Mail. Yeah. In the UK. Uh-huh. This is about uh, couples and their sleeping positions, right? Okay. So it says oh, that your sleeping fun. positions, how you sleep as a couple, tells a lot about your relationship. It's hard to disguise your feelings when you're asleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> spooning is the most popular sleep position. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find the percentage here. Oh, I, let me. I gotta skip that. I'm sorry. Let's back this up. <laughs> sleeping, sleeping face to face, every single body part touching. You're like entwined. You're basically yeah. like locked in. You're locked up, right? It says that uh, this pose puts lovers smack in the middle of the. I can't believe I found you, and it shows desire on all levels, and need for reassurance, and a total commitment to each other in the relationship. But if you're still doing it after a couple of years, it could be like a Tweedledum Tweedledee codependency thing. Like you can't even you can't even sleep without each other because you're so wrapped up. Like, right. Yeah. All face to face, you know, getting each other's morning breath when you wake up. <laughs> that's this. Um, spooning is the most popular. It's the classic happy couple position. Uh, it means you're both loving and you want to be physically close, and it isn't necessarily sexual. It's uh, more of a comforting gesture. Even in the morning. <laughs> The morning is just like instant, man. It don't even matter. It don't even matter, man. No. Just like roll, roll right over and it's on. But uh, <laughs> uh, it says 31% of couples sleep spooning, facing the same direction and in some form of, of contact. Uh, it's the most popular position. Oh, no, excuse me. It's not the most popular position. The most popular position is back to back with your butts touching. Yeah, so most people I like that one. sleep back to back with your butts touching. Forty two percent prefer that. And <laughs> they think they they analyze that into thinking that you want some form of physical contact, but you're comfortable enough being on your own, but you just wanna you just wanna know each other's there. So yeah. you're just like 
you're both sleeping fetal position opposite ways and just scoot your booty back just to touch. <laughs> yeah, so you're just still like touch where the bathing suit covers. <laughs> Um, 86% of couples in the survey who slept less than an inch away were happy in their relationship. So in a nutshell, the closer you sleep, the 10 that you tend to be the happier in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, Um, that sucks. If one or both of you cross your arms over your body, you're protecting yourself emotionally by subliminally covering your heart. Oh, I did that. I cover my balls too. You ever do that? So you co- you cover your heart with one hand and your balls with the other, yeah. and, then, and then turn your back and go to sleep. Yeah, for real, but usually on a, usually on the couch. <laughs> so then, ninety four percent of the happiest couples were those who reached out a foot or a hand, exchanged a word or a kiss or a care and caress before bed. It doesn't really matter necessarily where you sleep during the night, ah. but you have some form of little contact before you doze off to sleep. Yeah. Uh, the study also says that they call it the the div- pre-divorce pose. If you're in pre-divorce uh-huh. pose, that's where you're turned away from each other back to back, yeah. but you're like a mile away. Like each one of you is cliff oh, hanging on the edge yeah, of the bed. There's like no, a million, me. like tons of space in I'm between. On the, I'm on the cliff. No, but the thing is, like you think Judy is little? Um, Judy is the fake name for my girlfriend. <laughs> um, the fake name for your fake girlfriend? She's super little, right? And she takes up the whole king, whatever, hugest bit. Oh, does she starfish? The whole thing. Yeah, and like grows. Like a stretch. <laughs> She's like, it's stretch. I don't even strong. understand it yet. And then I'll be on this, I'll be on the side with both feet off the bed. Plastic and like man. my hand. Yeah, just on the edge. Just sleeping on the edge of the building, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Did you like hold the sheets so you don't fall yeah. out? No, there's no sheets. Oh, she has them all. So you're out in the cold. You're on the cliff. Dude, in the cold. I'm in the cold, and I'm on the edge. I'm on living on the edge right there, just all night. All she has to do is twitch, and you go sailing off. You. Well, sometimes it's just an arm down. Uh-huh. You know, an arm down, bounce back. But still, you got to be ready <laughs> on that type of shit. That's she's nuts. the littlest person ever made. Yeah, and it's a weird. I don't understand how it even works. Well, see, now that's interesting because I have this different. I have a different article here. This and she from... turns into a dragon if you wake her. Nothing. Uh oh. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, that did. That didn't come out. Uh, got it's a different article from CanadianLiving.com. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this one's great. What are your sources, man? <laughs> hey, like man. Can- like CanadianLiving.com. You know they're reliable. It's a reliable source. Those Canadians are trusted. I guess you don't have your location services on. <laughs> pull things from random whatever yeah, comes up no location services <laughs> gotta turn that wi-fi Armenian setting on couples counseling so this is a study about not how you sleep as couples but how you sleep as an individual so this might say a little something about this because the couples yeah, is one is thing mm-hmm. yeah this is where i get so, creative fetal position is the classic curled up on one side legs bent it's the most popular sleeping position amongst men and women surveyed with 41 percent choosing it as their favorite It was also the clear winner amongst women with 51% opting for a night curled up under the comforter alone as fetal position. According to the study, those who prefer this position are described as presenting a tough exterior, but are often shy and sensitive under the surface. They also may take some time to warm up to new people, but ultimately relax and become more social. Mm -hmm. There's fetal position sleepers. The next is log position. Uh Uh-oh, what's that? Log position is... I've never even heard of this before. It's <laughs> lying on your side with both your legs and arms straight. You're just like straight, but like lying on your side. I don't know. I don't know. I don't That's, think that even works. They call that log position. 15% of people. Yeah. Like, yeah. Some acrobat. I, don't know, I think I've probably done that though on the <laughs> very edge of the bed. That's probably what you're doing. <laughs> very That's how you edge. sleep every night because yeah. you don't have enough room <laughs> to go fetal. You can't curl up. You've got this log position. <laughs> no way. Our butts aren't even touching. So 15%, you're in there with 15%. Because you're uh-huh. at log position, man. Uh, log position people are social, easygoing, and trusting in their daily lives. Although sometimes they're prone to gull- gullibility. Uh-huh. You'd be a little gullible. I you're sleeping like a log. The yearner. Sleeping like a log. Really? <laughs> How about this? The yearner. Oh. The yearner is somebody who sleeps on their side with both arms stretched straight out. So you're not curled all up like fetal position, uh-huh. but you're still on your side, and your arms are just like straight out I, to the side. I do. I do all of these. Uh... 13% of people choose this as their sleeping position, and they identify themselves as having open personalities, sometimes prone to suspicion and cynicism. Wow. 
Yearners are also described as slow decision makers, but once the choice is made, they stick to it. Are you a yearner if you're doing that? Because my arm, I just do my arms like I'm. I move all my around. My arms are up. So, like my arms are up. I sleep on my back and wake up. Who knows how? Maybe it's just how you start going to sleep. Is you yeah. start sleeping position? Yeah. Well, in a, did you just make up start sleeping position? <laughs> <laughs> like your sleeping start position. It's the warmest way to. It's the warmest. But how much space is there in between you and your partner? Well, she's is already your foot as- touch? She's like, oh yeah, she's already asleep. Sometimes I have to like push her out of the way so I can have enough room. But there's, you're usually touching in some way. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. That says good science. science yeah. Good yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know like what in in the middle of the night. I don't know like yeah. if I'm roll over this way because it's like it's all it's all different. It's, it's every man for himself at <laughs> yeah. that point. But so if we're judging just on beginning positions here, maybe Start. Jeff, maybe you're a soldier. <laughs> you're a soldier. The soldier position <laughs> is lying <laughs> on your back with both arms straight at your sides. No, I don't do that because, um, you know, your hands or your extremities are cold. And so when you, you put, put your, your hands on like that, shirt. and they, they like, touch in your thighs, you know, and it's like, ha, ah, ooh, that's cold. I don't want that. So you go out wide. So I, uh, I'll either do that or I'll, like, you put them on in. my belly. Or yeah. belly. No. I don't call it your belly. No, I do like this. Let's be honest. You can't see this, whoever's listening, <laughs> but like this. Oh, like okay, on yeah, your yeah. belly? That's like, uh, that's like corpse pose. Like holding yeah. those... No, no, that's okay. like this. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not a mummy, you know. Well, so if you were sleeping in soldier position, your character traits would be uh, disciplined, like their namesake. The sleepers identify themselves as people who set high expectations for themselves and others and exhibit a quiet and reserved nature. Well, that's nope. kind of like me. I like this. A lot of times recently, I'm sleeping fetal position. Usually, you know, either spoon or your butt's touching. Like, you know, that mm-hmm. usually how it, how it goes down. Yeah. But free fall, I used to sleep free fall. Free fall <laughs> What's is... What's this? This might be mine. Free fall is belly down on your stomach with your head turned to one side and your arms up by your yeah. pillow. But see, I'll do all of it. Uh, arms up. Hands up. You gotta be. You gotta <laughs> think about it all the time. It's huh? obvious that Jeremy is unarmed. That's because you're even doing. That's because you're even doing. Don't shoot when you're asleep. Man. That's what I'm saying. That's where. That's where we've gotten. That's where we're at. That's where America has come to. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Don't even start with that shit. Fuck. <laughs> wake up, hands up, falling off a cliff, <laughs> then jump back on. The dragon gets at you. Gets on. <laughs> <laughs> Fire. How's your dream life, homie? Man, you're about to fall off a cliff and free falling. <laughs> Hands oh, no, I killed the dream. I know how to do that. I got medicine. <laughs> it's one or the other. I got you medicine have one for that. Or the other. You either dream while you're awake or while you're asleep. You can't do both. Uh, 13% of people surveyed chose free fall as their sleep position. They identify themselves as having open personalities, but sometimes prone to suspicion or cynicism. Yearners are also... Oh, wait a minute. I rolled it back. Sorry, that was a yearner. <laughs> that was a No, yearner. free fall. I was like, hey, that percentage sounds the same. Ideal, yeah. <laughs> Free fallers are forward. free fallers are seven percent, seven percent, and they identify as uh, being sociable and brash, though inwardly nervous and often sensitive to criticism. Mm. And I could actually, when I used to sleep free fall, that was mm. totally me. How you felt? That was totally me. Weird. Did you change I, your sleep pattern? I didn't consciously do it, but, but the, you did. The way I go, the way I my go to sleep position has changed. Yeah, that's cool. And what's Weird. interesting is that uh, that free fall when it says. Uh, sociable and brash but inwardly nervous and sensitive to criticism that was totally me like i wasn't comfortable enough in social settings and so i would like almost try to be i would try to have the stories be over the top yeah or maybe like offensive or like out there or like do some oh, big bold do. thing you know yeah. just to get attention or whatever but inside yeah it's a little you know a little shy oh, a little nervous yeah. so that's funny I, I identify with that that's cool starfish position is the least popular only five percent of people sleep in starfish position wham so, Judy. Judy's a starfish. Yeah. Starfish sleepers lie on their backs Judy. with legs and arms spread mm-hmm. wide. Sometimes the arms are up by the head, just taking up the whole bed. Yeah. Starfish oh, no. just take up the whole oh, bed. Oh, you don't even know. This is like extra arm. Like there's some kind of weird birth <laughs> effect. Starfish birth effect. Well, it's like those sunfishes have like 20 arms. That's what it's like. But then they're like, they go long too. Though. Like you don't even know. I don't know how it works. She's just little. It's a huge amount. It's, it's like a juice. garage. All right, well, see if this see if starfish persona fits her. Starfish sleepers lie on their backs with uh, legs sprawled, arms stretched over near their head usually, and were reported to on make, her chin. make friendship a priority. I'm giving away all the, Wait a minute, this is made up. I made all that up. Go ahead. Uh, they dislike being the center of attention 
and instead offering to listen to the problems of others and go out of their way to offer assistance to those in need. Oh my god. Jesus, Judy. Shut the fuck up. Is that appropriate? Uh, I don't know. I don't starfish know. in it, man. That yeah, sounds like Julie to me. Wow, she's a starfish. <laughs> oh, my little starfish. <laughs> don't call spread her Spread your star. arms from me. Oh, this is getting weird. I want teapot. I'm glad you didn't say spread your legs from me because that would have been a little funny. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you tell a starfish leg from a starfish arm? It's like the same thing. They both come off. And, they <laughs> and they grow back. back. They yeah. grow back. That was the whole thing. I, I wonder arms, if... Aren't they? No, they got a little center heart of where their soul is. Starfish soul. Starfish soul? Mm-hmm. That's a good there. band name. It is. Starfish soul. And that's Starfish exactly what it soul. is. It's like a, it's a soul band, but they have a little, like, a little surf vibe, a little oh, ocean vibe. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sandy, is that their first hit I single? I think so, but it's not already Oh, song. Sandy. <laughs> yeah. like it's Sandy's I was trying to sing it really bad because it was just that already a song. You. Kitchen door. Get my Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> Their first single is gonna be. Mom. First single is gonna be the Blue Lagoon Blues. Ooh. Ooh. Blue Lagoon Blues. And you know what the blues is? Is that you watched the Blue Lagoon on TV when you were a kid and you didn't get to actually see any of the nudity? Why not? Oh. Because it was on TV. Oh no, I, I saw nudity. Yeah, but you probably had the, the cable. I'm, I didn't have the cable, but I had the VHS. VHS. Yeah, Ooh. I didn't have the VHS. VHS the meant wearing it out. <laughs> Auto tracking, auto tracking, auto tracking, just on certain parts. <laughs> wow. You seen that show, The Goldbergs? I don't even know what that is. That uh, means nothing. You don't got no, no TV, idea. huh? No, no, yeah. no, nothing. No. I could if I wanted to. No, no, I know. I wasn't well, saying. You have, have to apply to the Yacht Club to, for them to allow you to have a TV. Well, actually, the majority of my neighbors, the majority of my liveboard neighbors, are avid TV watchers. You walk by the boat, and that's all you see is like one television taking up their whole damn their whole damn space. Their whole boat, you know. And we got a little room to stretch out in, but I still ain't got no TV. Well, I like to not have a TV too. Well, you know, I've been been those people. You put a little camera on the on the bow and and watch somebody else's TV. No, and then when you're you're sailing, you can put the TV on the bow camera, and people can sit. in the living room and not get cold and wet and still watch the, the Goldbergs do oh we're in clothes man we got windows the Goldbergs the Goldbergs Adam Goldberg is the guy that uh, wrote it okay and uh, he he was on a show with uh, who's the craziest actor with uh, crazy blonde hair you got this Jeff crazy blonde hair give us more crazy dude nope crazy uh, Gary Busey Gary Busey that's it Dang. Yes! <laughs> yes! That's it. That's all you have to say. <laughs> Daniel wins the no clue guess. So he used to be on that show, <laughs> no me, and, for today. me and Busey, right? Did you ever hear about that show? I it's know just, nothing. I it's know a guy. It's I don't just, know, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. This guy, Adam Goldberg, yeah. was on a show with Gary Busey, uh-huh. and it was just crazy. It was, it was just, just him like, hanging out with It was like Gary a reality Busey. show, yeah. And, um, and it was over the top. Like, Gary Busey was over the top the whole time, so it was really fun to watch. Um, oh, dude, that is fucking crazy. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Anyways, that has nothing to do with it. I was just trying to get you guys in, but you guys aren't there. So, we're in. The Goldbergs is his new show that's all based on the 80s, and the kid in it videotapes everything because he videotaped everything like I videotaped everything. Uh huh. And so I totally relate to it all crazy. And uh, they they have clips, so they'll have the whole show about whatever, and it's all 80s out. 80s out. 80s. So it's a new show, but it looks like the film quality. It's it looks from like 80s. it's 1980s. Yeah, it's from the 80s. I don't know about the film quality. It's just like normal. You're just watching a TV show. But... Oh, I got you. So it looks like an old, but it's a, based in the 80s. Based in the okay. 80s. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying like it actually lo- everything looks like it's 80s it's, film. It's, and but it's it looks 80s. It's <laughs> yeah. just because they have every single 80s reference is like in the show. Nice. Weird. Um, but at the end of every one, he plays a little clip. Of what the story was about that he has on VHS from the real life. Oh, what? So it's about the mom. It's like my my archives, you know. Yes. And then uh, and then with the clip, you know, with the archived clip that just made this show, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, like my mom's overbearing and crazy, and then it's all his mom at the end running up to him and wrapping her arms around the camera and him and being like, oh my god, you really did it. <laughs> it's like exactly what she was just doing on the show. You know? Oh shit! It's awesome. That's amazing. I don't even know why I brought it up. I think it was VHS got me into that one. VHS, dude. 
You be feeling with one of those things? You're like walking around with a giant box on your shoulder, yeah, I man. I did that high school it's senior like year. VCR on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. You know so what I'm huge. saying? But with extra pieces so it can record and nope. you can get the handle. And, and you're a pimp. And the mic attached. Nobody even has. has a little boom mic hanging off the front. Nobody even has it. You're like the cameraman. Did but you? it's just so funny nowadays because you no. just whip out your tiny little phone. And Dude, my phone GoPro. has. I used to have. Yeah, it's like 13 or 16 or 24 megapixels or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I used to have every single thing in my backpack, right? So I had a video camera, audio recorder, camera, and like sketchbook. For old school. You're like a regular AV club. Yeah, but then uh, <laughs> now that's all in my phone, in my pocket. Uh-huh. Yeah. Every part of that. You went from like a backpack that weighed 45 pounds. Yeah, <laughs> then I carried it everywhere. Everywhere. I'd be at parties with it. I'd be everywhere with that. Uh-huh. Just a second. Let me set up this tripod. <laughs> <laughs> for real. That's not... That's real. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember that happening. That's where you get crazy footage from 20 years ago, though. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing is you're actually doing it because you've got all this stuff, you know, and it's like everyone has this camera in their pocket now. Granted, people do use them a lot. You know, yeah, so. oh, they will. Yeah. But a lot of times people, you know, like, oh, you know, you can film that anytime. Anybody can film that anything, anytime. So yeah. I don't need to film this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 50 like, people are going to film that dude get choked out. I don't need to do it. We can go. <laughs> I don't know what has to be a dude getting choked out, but me neither. Could be cute baby ducks or something. I don't know. <laughs> Let's Google both those. <laughs> oh man, I'm afraid of what we would find on the cute baby ducks one. Oh man, you know the, the cute baby ducks. It made me think of something else. What's like that? Not, what is it? Sounds bad. I got some not so good news. Oh, oh it is bad. I got some not, not so, so good, good news. news. Not bad, but it's not so good. It's not so bad, but it ain't the best. <laughs> it's not the best. <laughs> All right. I got a story for you here. This is from World News Daily Report. Wait, isn't that like a tabloid? Uh-oh. Yeah, this one's real. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say that this one's real. <laughs> okay. Little old lady arrested for making fur coats with neighbor's cats. Oh! <sighs> That's not real. This is real. How many cats do they have? How multiple coats here? Come is on. this a big coat? Is this like a Cruella de Vil coat? Guy, She's a real life this. Cruella de Vil. This one's a real life Cruella. <laughs> but do they have 101 cats? Yeah, how many cats does it take to... 101 calicos? <laughs> neighbor, neighborhood strays, you know? Yeah. Just bring them in. Okay. This is Waco, Texas. Oh, well. Well, say no more. An 85-year-old Texas woman has been arrested by local law enforcement after being caught on film kidnapping one of her neighbor's cats, <gasps> which she is accused of making fur coats out of. How did oh. she catch him? What's the... Did she have one of those traps or you pull the stick? It shouldn't be hard to... You, you want to see a picture of this lady? Because I'm going to put a picture of this in the comment section. Yeah, Look yeah. at this lady. Oh, my God. Is that the cat coat? No. Oh! No. That's the lady. Oh, my, is that, that the that cat lady, coat? That could be a cat Look coat. Look at that lady. Oh, my God. Wow. She got, like, the big old lady afro with the Dude, blue eyes. Wow. How, how the is Cruella de Vil a real person? Whoa. So... The recent disappearance of domestic animals in the neighborhood started to arise suspicion from local residents when some people started to notice the old lady's particular fur coats, some even recognizing their cat's coat's fur in the lady's coat. Oh! Like, <laughs> like oh! There's that little question mark on Fifi's leg. Oh, it's yes. Mr. Bubbles! Oh! oh spot! I, uh, <laughs> man, if I knew, like, if I, like, you saw some unmistakable thing like that you saw on the street. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if I would just be, like, heading home and, like, putting it on the internet that I saw that, you know? Like, yeah. So, the neighbors, the neighbors confronted this lady, and they okay. were like, hey, good. I think that's Mr. Bubbles in your coat. Like, okay, what good. the hell's going on? You've been <laughs> yeah. missing, you got this new fur coat you're wearing around Waco, Texas. And, uh, <laughs> her reactions. It's cold there in the winter, man. Dude. Not that cold. No, oh, it's cold in Texas in the winter. It doesn't get it, that cold. I lived there for a year. It, it doesn't is, get that cold it anywhere. It is not make a fur coat out of your neighbor's <laughs> cat cold. <laughs> if you're Corella de Ville, it might be that cold. So Obviously it was. When she got approached, her reaction well, get cold. She has a draft. was so crazy. She has like, drafts. She would, yeah. she would freak out. People would say, like, hey, I think that's my cat. And she, like, freaked out so much that they were like, that's kind of weird. And they hired a private detective that filmed her. Oh, I'd like to get that phone call. I want to uh, see her work spot shop. It was in her basement. Yeah. So it is believed that the old lady started to first raise her own cats specifically for their fur, but that she finally decided to capture the neighborhood cats because she got much too attached to the little critters. She admitted to in court. Oh, she, she, like, like, she let her cats live and killed all the other people's cats. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 
She was like, check out my coat. She was like, not you. She was happy to sign you? Yeah, smell that. She was a retired fashion designer. Oh, oh she insane? was fucking nuts. So she just, like, she was making her own line. Wow. She was just making her own line, you know? Oh, man. Creators gotta the... create. So she's just some, like, what in was her mind, name? she's some crazy outside artist then. What was the name? Outside artist. Thinking outside the blocks. The blocks. Just thinking outside the blocks. Thinking all around the blocks. Around her just lurking all around <laughs> the blocks. Oh, this is where it gets, this is where it gets a little terrible. If this wasn't terrible enough... Okay. Uh, okay. She has a panty line. Well, we talked about this not so great news segment. We didn't talk about how we're going to be killing cats in it, man. Well, we're gonna, we'll move on. Okay. We'll get better than this. This is just something. I mean, this has to be talked about. This is just not okay. Okay. It's a real life Corolla Deville. Yeah. She that's made true. panties. Oh. No. Good. Gross. So, sorry. <laughs> Jeremy. I don't know. Uh, she's, she's crazy. She's crazy. She would she would lure the cats in there with food and then skin them in her basement where she dried the skins. Nice. Then she would also use the meat of the cats to lure Soup. other cats. Oh! Oh. oh! So you know what, though? It's okay because all these cats that she killed are bad cats because they're cannibal cats. So you know what? They're kill the cannibal cats. Kill the cannibal cats. Kill the cannibal cats. Kill the cannibal cats. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's take a, let's take a vote. What do you think her, uh, her sentence is? Ooh. Well, it's cruelty to animals. So and it's a lot to make a coat. She had wait a minute. It, she used over thirty mm. cats to make each coat, and had over twenty fur coats found in her house. <laughs> okay, so six hundred counts of six hundred cats potentially. <laughs> wow! Wow! Well, I mean, personally, I hope they fucking give her the fucking chair. Whoa! But, Sentence know. anybody? Oh, we can just. Jeff we, wants to give her the chair. Are we the judge? <laughs> judge, jury, and. Executioner, um, hopefully. Yeah, I don't know what to. I don't First know what executioner. Because the was... thing is, I've always wanted to kill Corella Deville. So you know what? Mm. This is a real life. This is real life, and that's Finally. that's six times the amount of Dalmatians that Corella Deville even so wants to kill. Many cats. Who doesn't even succeed? That's a lot of cats. That's so many. Apparently, according to the Waco, Texas justice system, do you know what the lives of over six hundred cats are worth? Like. How much? Uh, how much community, community service? service? Eighteen months in jail. She's gonna do some time. Uh, okay. She'll do eighteen months. But granted, she's eighty-five, so that could very well be a death sentence. That could be a life sentence. Oh, life. Yeah. She's eighty-five um, years old. Yeah, because she can't. You know, she can't move around. Was it worth it? I guess she can move around. She can catch cats. So fuck. You but know she's what? not gonna be able to keep warm up in the jail without those though. coats, man. She's gonna freeze. She'll probably kill her cellmate and steal the extra. You know, wear their skin. Oh, oh Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, she'll start making. She faces. can't stop. No, she's a Grandma Lecter. She's a fashionista. Dude, she's what about my stuff. spring line? Yeah. What am I going to do about my spring collection? I can't do oh, it. God, it's this. orange. Everything can't be orange. <laughs> Maybe I can sew your face up so it looks like. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> well, that happened. Corella Deville's real and is in jail now. It's some, with so we can all some sleep. terrified cellmate, it sounds like. <laughs> what else? Is there more bad news? What are or you not in, so good? What are you yeah. in jail for? I forged a check. What are you in here? <laughs> <laughs> um, I skinned 600 cats to make 20 fur coats. My new line. <laughs> you just sound like Scooby-Doo laughing. Oh, I can't wait to, wait to post it. Wait till you see this picture, people. Wait till you see this lady. He turned and talked to the mm -hmm. computer to say that everyone mm -hmm. is waiting. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Well, so, I mean, I got that. There's one. That's a good one. <laughs> There's one. Not so good, bad. Let's do, let's do one more in the not so good news, and then we can is it better it. than dead cats? It is better than dead cats. Okay. Nothing dies in this next story. Who okay. cares about dead cats? Gummo. Oh. Sorry. I care about dead cats, man. I have a okay. cat. She's cute. I have cat. I have cat. She's cute. I love her. <laughs> I love her. Sorry. What's the other story there, Danny? Oh, my other not so good news story. Not so good, but slightly not as bad. <laughs> slightly not as bad. Okay, <laughs> not as bad. Also, an animal news. This is like animal news. Oh news no! Story. All right. A man gets the shock of his life when he buys two toy poodles for one hundred and fifty dollars each, only to be told by the vet that they were actually giant rats, <laughs> pumped up with steroids and groomed to what? look like dogs. <laughs> 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 How stupid can you be? Okay, but first of all, wait. Okay, so if you're buying these 
Okay. <laughs> poodles, right? There's special the poodle totally puppies. Poodles. Right? Jeff, take it from the top. <laughs> 150 bucks each, yeah. No way. They should be 1500 bucks each. Well, that's why the people thought you're it was a deal. A it's deal. a deal. You're an idiot. It looks a little weird, but... <laughs> it looks like a <laughs> rat. Face, face looks a little weird. With, a, with a, you know... But these are cheaper spray. ones. Just buy it, honey. Push buy it. Push buy it. Put it in the cart. <laughs> now, this is going to be another photo comment, too, because wait until you see the side-by-side of an actual toy poodle versus what this man bought as a poodle. It's pretty good. So, but wait a minute, what size is this? What size? How big? Now, they wait, say no. it was a giant rat, but in the article oh, it actually doesn't. specifically says it was a ferret. They call them Brazilian rats, and so it was a ferret that was raised from birth and fed steroids <laughs> well, purposely <laughs> to pass it off as a toy Okay, but, okay here's the thing. I want to hear his voice. So, like, if you go to the main society and you get a, a dog, from brand, you know, brand new rescue dog, right? Yeah. Um, you're paying... Roughly about 150 bucks in like all the fees and the and the immunizations and all this. Okay, so that's that's like basically bare minimum what it takes to buy a dog is about 150 bucks. Okay? Yeah. So. <laughs> so what the? Well, what the fuck is going on? Like, why did you, you go say? to the? Why? Biggest... Well, how can you go to so much trouble to like raise ferrets and feed them steroids <laughs> and, and you to sell it for 150 bucks? <laughs> What the fuck is that? He just spent more in steroids. That's what I'm saying. Like, you gotta sell it. Like, you give the people a deal. It's not fifteen hundred. It's eight hundred. <laughs> it's like half price. It's great. It makes some money because you're raising ferrets from they birth must... with on in some like crazy what incubation chamber with hooked up to steroid. Oh, dude, the ferrets just breed on their own. I think that that's the thing with the rodents is they, they just like it. you don't have any setup. This is in Argentina. They got like they got no incubation. They got no nothing. The so ferrets there's just not like, a lot of overhead in this. In this uh, operation, no. Well, they no. got one hell of a deal on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> I think but that's the thing is, good. what if they got them from the same guy and they're not really steroids? You know, what I mean? it's like <laughs> it's, it's corn syrup. <laughs> I like thinking they're just fat. That the family had such a good deal on steroids that the whole family's like ripped. The whole family's just like tanked out. Mm. And then the ferrets are big just because they give them the table scraps. It's like just a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath like, the table? The person that bought this giant ferret didn't think twice that like the His four year old boy that he bought the <laughs> ferret from idea. was like 250 pounds of solid muscle. Yeah, I can't touch the belly button. You bud fairy poodle. You bud poodle. You bud poodle now. You're here to pick up poodle. I'm here to pick up money for poodle. <laughs> I don't know why the Argentines were suddenly Russian, but. I don't, I don't <laughs> the steroids will do that. <laughs> You're, wow! I'm Excessive not... steroid use shifts anybody's accent into, into Russian. It makes me think of like Rocky Four, was it right? That Rocky Four. Oh yeah! Montage? Yes. I don't know. I've never seen any Rocky movies ever. What's if you're gonna see, only watch Rocky Four. I live in America. I've never seen a single one of them. Watch Rocky Four. Do yourself yeah, you a favor. Don't live in my America. Do you want to see the fine art of montage? Watch Rocky <laughs> Four, okay? Because there's a scene there where you have Rocky. He's in Russia doing this prize fight. He's That's like so good. humble. He's staying in like a barn. What's the name of the know? guy that he fights? That's the best thing to know. Right? I think it's like Vlad, Vlad Draco. Vladimir? Draco. Yeah, it's, it's Draco. 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 Drago. <laughs> Drago kill. So you He'll have like beat your ass. You have Rocky. <laughs> Dude, Drago will beat your ass. Dra- Drago will beat your ass. Dra- Drago will beat fucking Rocky's ass all day. Dude, I'll beat Drago's ass. <laughs> Dude, nah. Dude, I'm saying on the internet. Oh man, I'm I said bummed. it on the internet. I'm bummed not coming to your house. Dude, he could Drago have, will he could have a grizzly ass. bear in each hand. Dude. And I would still beat his ass. No, not if you see this montage, man. When you see this montage, dude... <laughs> He's made of it's iron. Like, it's Rocky... No, it's just my montage, dude. <laughs> Rocky's in a bar. Look at my montage, bar. dude. He's, like, pulling a sled through the snow. You know, he has, like, you the... breaking? He's dragging a tractor. He's dragging a tractor with his teeth. <laughs> He's, like, bench-pressing a goat, you know? It's, like, all this down and dirty. Goat. Now, you get the back Whatever. and forth. You get the back and forth. There's Rocky in the barn. Yeah. And there's Drago. And he's, like, hooked he's up to a pro- treadmill he's at the with all these, like, like, diodes hooked to his head. With the science. And he's really an Argentinian on and then fucking it's like, steroids. Yeah. He's not even Russian. Because it does the close-up. <laughs> it shows the close-up of this big flexing muscle with, like, the yeah. syringe going in and the steroid shot. Mm-hmm. It's all of it. Yeah, he was just some, like, uh, computer programmer from Argentina. They were like, all right, come here, dude. Come here, dude. Stay still. No, I killed Rocky. 
<laughs> Who was next? His career, his career breeding and selling t- ferrets. I mean, toy poodles. Toy poodles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was after out. you know Rocky five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten didn't really pan out. Oh uh, yeah, the residual checks still. Yeah, come he's like, well, I got to pay for something. I got to pay for the steroid habit somehow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Moving back to Argentina yeah. and raising ferrets. I mean poodles. <laughs> I mean poodles. <laughs> Which is the littlest balls? <laughs> Don't you talk about my balls? I will lift you. I will lift you and then put you down and lift you up again. <laughs> and then when I put you down the second time, you will not be happy. <laughs> what else is going on? What else is going on? What else is going on? I don't know. I want it to fucking snow, man. It did what? for like three seconds the other day. Yeah, I was walking down the dock enough. and it was like I got hit no, in the nose with a snowflake. No, it's not good snow. enough. See? No, this is snow. what I'm dealing with here. No, snow. Why, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Because you want, because you got to It's you know, it's such a pain in the ass for you to commute all the way to, to Seattle to go to work. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm just kidding. I want snow. All right. Because I want magic. the puppets. Everyone thinks it's a castle. I, I think it's magic. Yeah. It is. Ma- I'm down hey, with man, snow. You got I any like snow. it. But you know, you're in, you know, you're lying. Sometimes you're in line at the store, and not just Christmas time, just any time. Mm-hmm. You know, and taking a minute, and so people I hope start chatting amongst themselves, yeah. you know, while you're waiting. You're the dick like that wants well, it to snow. Right, I'm the dick that wants it to snow. It sucks. Yeah. People are like, oh, it's getting cold. I'm like, yeah, I hope it snows. And people are like... What? They like want to not stand by me like, and shit. Stop saying that out loud, like, ass. It's you like the, drive. the record scratch sound bite. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. like, But it's a record of... And it's holiday season. <laughs> it's a record of fingernails on a chalkboard. <laughs> that like, stops. <laughs> Everyone's like, what? Uh, we don't serve your kind around here. You know what I mean? And it's like, because everyone's like, oh, I got to drive to work in the snow. You know, it's, I grew up in upstate New York. It's like there's two feet on the, the snow on the ground the whole time, all winter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't realize any of this until I moved to Michigan my senior year. Same thing, exactly. Yeah, or well, I didn't even know. Yeah. I, I was like, whoa, it snowed a uh, half an inch. Oh, shit. Everyone's like, no, it didn't. It didn't even snow. Yeah, and then <laughs> you go there, and it's four, it's like six feet on the sides of the roads ab- uh, above you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're driving. To, you just drive wherever you're going. And that's just normal. Yeah. And that's, see, that's what I grew up with. And so I come here, not a fucking flake ever, you know, except for yeah. the that landed on your nose the other night. Right. You know? <laughs> and I'm like... If we see the kind of snow that I want to see, you don't need to worry about driving to work. Yeah. Because <laughs> nobody's driving to work for like a week because yeah. there's like three feet of snow. You can't open your door. Exactly. The only people going to work are like, you know, police officers, you know, the guys that fix the power lines. Snow guys. Snow guys. Snowmen. Snow, well, the snowmen got to go to work. They got a lunchbox full of They start of popping out of everywhere. Sorry. Mr. Plow. I, I like thinking of that Simpsons guys. episode when Homer straps on a plow onto the front of his truck and starts to... What's that name again? Mr. Yeah. Plow. I know. <laughs> What's that name? It's Mr. Plow. That's the song. Mr. Plow, that's my name. That name again is Mr. Plow. <laughs> Damn it. I Dude. hate people that make millions and billions of dollars. <laughs> For writing jingles? Dude, I always thought sometimes I got in the wrong business, man. I just gotta write jingles. Oh, it would be so fun writing just jingles. Write a jingle. Oh, I'd be into it. That's all you gotta do. And especially like that, you just write a whole jingle that's just saying the name of your product like five times. Yeah. That's so, you know, the, the thing is, is like, the jingle's like a thing of the past, honestly. Right. Because, but it's coming back nostalgic style. Well, but it's, they do it, it's, and it's, it's, uh, it's tongue in cheek because it's annoying and it's, yeah. and people hate it for real. Yeah. It's really the thing. People yeah. hate it. Because back in the day, that was your deal. That's how you're gonna sell, you know, your baked beans or whatever the fuck you got, your like, tied laundry flakes. <laughs> During Leave It to Beaver, you're like, where, where they stop in the middle of the show and be like, by the way, blah, 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 blah. And they walk over to the little commercial set and they do their little thing, and then just like on the radio when they talk on the radio, and they, right. they don't go to commercial, the guy just reads a thing. Buy our shit because it's the best. Buy our shit because it it's the best. The test. <laughs> Ding! Right, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's how they used to a be, you know? You and now people don't have that thing. The little jingles anymore, you know, unless it's really bad shit. No, dude, go to some fucking that goddamn like, insurance. Oh, we're talking one. Vern Funk? Yeah, no, but yes. But they don't have a jingle; they just have a little slogan. Yeah. yeah, oh, that's different. But the, uh, the but those are the one. best commercials on TV, by the way. <laughs> I like how it works on me all the time until I'm trying to talk about it right now. I was like, there's one that's just super crazy, just embeds in your head. You'll never forget it. You can sing it anytime. 
Mattress store? But I can't remember what it is. Is it mattress store? Nope. It's insurance. It's insurance. And there's a, there's a commercial specifically showing the guy go. Duh, 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 whatever. Oh, I know what you're talking about. But that's all you gotta do. Anyways, da, 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 da. Ding. <laughs> That'll be a million dollars, thank you. Yeah, right, they gotta pay us. Bing. I got a local thing. What's local, local news. news? Local, local news. news. Yeah, lo- Let's I got get that local, local news thing. train. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. We're here. We're here. We're here in the office. <laughs> the um They're gonna put the war hall on the Tacoma Dome. Is that passed? I don't know. What? It's, I was try- I was saying it like it was a statement, but it had a question mark on it. Oh, oh. let's keep saying it like it's a real thing. No, but I, I think like it's that. a real thing. Uh, well, I hope so. Me too. But you know, that's a let's catch our listeners up with what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. The um, Tacoma Dome uh, has like a stupid design on it right now. It's, it's been, been the same it. since it's been, it's been since on it's the been same. made. Yeah, since the very beginning, and it's kind of aided out, aided out. That's twice. I know. I'm trying to turn it into a real word. Aided. AD'd. Let's, yeah, let's get AD'd out. AD'd. Let's get the S out, though, because it's super, it's super hard to say. Just say AD'd. AD'd. Let's make it a thing. ADD. Sorry, ADD. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Anyways. Uh, so they're going to. Um, there was a. The Tacoma Dome was built April 21st, 1983. And AD. the design, it hasn't changed since then. It's looked the same since 83. It's yes. like figuratively supposed to be like the mountain. Small breast laying down. <laughs> With like some kind of bluish points on it. Uh, mm. Weird tattoo. Some Star Trek one. Well, weird weird tattoo. Everyone um, from that planet has that kind of shit on So there was some kind of thing a long time ago. This is me teaching right now. Mm-hmm. There was some kind of thing a long time ago when the land was new. And... <laughs> I got some Tacoma Dome stats when you're ready. You and he were good because this is all made up. Bullshit. <laughs> The um, largest wooden dome in the world. Yeah, so Andy Warhol wanted to get a piece of Tacoma, right? Because Tacoma's the shit, right? Yeah. And so he's like, oh, damn, I think Tacoma's the new New York. That's what he called it. New New York. New, new York. I think we should have just changed the that's name. That's what he called it. That's, what, he want, that's what he was going to do, and they died. But anyways. <laughs> Man. So he was like, well, I think Tacoma's going to be my little flower of love, right? So he made this... Uh, drawing or something or copied somebody's or cut off, cut it off something did did something and cut said it, it was his couch yeah told, me, told somebody to draw it um i like this upholstery and then some, I like your i like your warhol imitation That's well nice. it's david bowie as warhol from basquiat is what it is Ooh. full circle speaking of david bowie nice. david bowie was the very first concert in the tacoma dome wow ba, 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 ba. Boom. Boom. full Boom. circle not planned go ahead Thank you. No, cheers. That shit is dope. Oh, we got it. Come here. Anyway, so it, it might really happen. That's Jeremy Gregory reporting. <laughs> well, Jeremy, as your editor, I have to give you a, at least a, a couple notes. B minus on this one. <laughs> there were some holes. <laughs> But you were interrupted <laughs> you <did>. repeatedly, <laughs> so we'll make it a B plus. But you know what? You know what Sean Alexander did? What he made? Uh, he photoshopped uh, just a big shuck face <laughs> <laughs> on the Tacoma oh, Dome, no, no. <laughs> and it's the best thing ever. I'm on the they're ground. Like, right they're right like now, really, on the ground. It, it really matches it. You know, like it really. That would be oh our best God. one. Oh my God, that would be our best one. Sean's a fucking genius. I know it. Jesus. That's so funny. It's really funny. You should wait till oh. you see the picture. I'll put it on. <laughs> I can't wait. That's what I'll put on the credit. Oh. I mean, oh. on the local comments. local graffiti icon slash menace Shuckface. <laughs> He'll be getting up like nobody's business on the Tacoma Dome. <laughs> uh, oh no! It's so good. The Tacoma Dome. I don't know if it's the biggest wooden dome ever. It doesn't say that, okay. but it's it's all wood, which is really impressive. The whole dome structure is wood. Right. It is built with over 1.6 million board feet of wood. And it weighs 1,444,000 pounds. 1,444,000 pounds. Yes. Just the roof. I don't want to go in there anymore. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Speakerphone. It's time. Speakerphone. No. No. Hi, baby. 
Yeah, they yelled speakerphone. Are you ready? No. No, she said no. <laughs> we'll just keep talking that loud. Okay, I'm, we're just going to talk, but you know, that's super annoying for people to hear one half of a conversation. I'll do the rest. Okay, it's not fun at all. <laughs> oh, oh. What's not uh, fun, baby? You should have called in during it's our like, not-so-good news This is, so good this news is my segment. dentist calling right now. <laughs> my dentist is calling to read me the family circus. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> okay, hang on one sec. I gotta figure out how to do it on this thing. Speakerphone? Speaker oh, because you haven't done it yet, huh? Yeah, here we go. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Everybody, this is Zayna. Zayna! Zayna! Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> That's the fake name Jeff made up for you oh, for yeah, his girlfriend is, uh, on the podcast. This is uh, Dana. Nice. <laughs> uh, okay. What's going on, baby? Uh, well, are my brothers in the house? Well, they were here earlier, and I don't know if they're still here. Can you play that to music? Yeah, I can play that. <laughs> <laughs> are my brothers in the house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're bummed about the car, but I told them everything they need to know about getting into the house and the door and everything, so. <laughs> Can you put them on speaker too? Who? No. My brother. No, they're not here. If they called during the show, we would have. Yeah. You're the very first one. They Dan skipped right his mom. That was it. Oh, uh, they were like, you think to be on air. Oh, well, I told them we were doing it. They didn't be like, hey, let's be on it or anything, so. Well, that's totally shy, but like, if they walked into it, I think they'd probably be into it. Well, I told them I was recording and that I wouldn't be able to answer the door for a while, so. Oh, they're probably okay. purposely avoiding this part of the house. Yeah, probably. Plus, you know, we're doing some evil shit in here that they're afraid of. <laughs> yeah, they're in they're in the back room right now making fur coats. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, baby. Tigger's okay. One of them was outside. Oh, Jesus. Um, okay, well, I'm going to drive home. Okay. Cool. Yes, it is. And hopefully I'll be running on the road. Okay, well, you know, call me again if you have any problems. Hey, good luck out there. Thanks. Um, yeah. You all need anything? Well, I'm out. You guys need anything? Tacos. Candy. Dan says he needs tacos, but he's a vegan, so good luck with that. Oh, Mimos, uh, man. Mimos has vegan tacos. Drive through. I'm kidding. I don't really want you to bring me tacos. It was just funny. You always feel like the Jack in the Box tacos are vegan? I doubt that. No way. No. Even the ones that say they're beef, they're probably. Ugh, I, I mean, don't know. they got cheese on them, right? No, I'm I'm good on the Jack in the Box tacos. Um, no, you can, you can ask for it without cheese. I feel like when I used to work there, like, they don't have any meat. When you used to work there? Uh, yeah, I was Is this a podcast story that I hear? You worked there? Yeah. When did you work I at Jack of the Box? Yeah. When? In high school. Oh, really? Can you tell us a funny story about That's that? That's when you're supposed to. That's good. No, I'm not very funny today, I think. I think I'm not going to be funny. <laughs> Can you tell us the most serious story? <laughs> Can you tell us the most heartbreakingly serious Can you tell story? Us the most dramatic story from that time? Uh, no, because I didn't really know what I was doing because I was so young. <laughs> you weren't ready? You didn't have a story prepared? She was like, Lady, I don't even know if the tacos are vegan or not. <laughs> I swear, I really think that they're vegan, but you know. Don't quote me on it, but I really think that they don't have any meat, which is sort of... But don't, aren't they advertised as beef? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty sure, but I feel like I read the ingredients when I worked there, and I was a vegetarian at the time, and I okay. feel like I could eat the tacos, but, you know, I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. I have a feeling that nothing at Jack in the Box is actually vegan. <laughs> like, I, don't know what they say it is. I have a feeling that nothing at Jack in the Box is actually edible. <laughs> That's probably a good point. Um, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Anyway, I'm they, gonna go on the freeway now, so I'm they, gonna go. Okay, Thanks for baby. Being your first speakerphone caller. No, Rachel's called before. Oh yeah, that was quick, but it didn't yeah. make a it didn't make a cut. It didn't get 
Oh, it didn't make the episode cut, so maybe you'll make the episode cut, baby. I did forget about that. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not very interesting. Well, Jack in the Box and, and Vegan Tacos is pretty interesting. I know, it's all good. This is gold. Yes, Dan says it's gold, so you're screwed. We're on, you're on the air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I love you. I love you, too. I'm be home soon. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Why did the music end at the exact same time that the phone call ended? Because it was meant to be. Because it's the same time our episode's going to end. It's, that's candy teeth right there. That's Sorry. The candy teeth. Remember when we were trying to define it for you and we couldn't? That Last was week? candy teeth. Bam. Hey, Jeremy, let's go out with a, a quote from Frank Jacobs' yearbook. Frankie, how you doing? This year has gone by so fast. Can you believe next year I'll be a junior and you'll be a senior? I can hardly wait, though, T-H-O. You've been a good friend. That's back in the days to be doing that. You've been a good friend. Was it T-H-O? Yeah, T-H-O, though. 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 I can hardly though. wait, though. You've been a good friend to me ever since junior high. Remember cooking class? That was so much fun. We should have cooking again. Well, I'll <laughs> see you at the... I'll see you at the trees. Oh, Have you know a nice summer. Is. You know what that is? Oh, oh. Maybe I'll see you. Love ya. Jill. That's I'll really see you at the trees. The wacky tobacco. Yeah, that's the weed spot. I'll see you at the trees. Frank, man. Frank Jacob was a pimp. Frank Jacob sounds like a troublemaker to me. Well, sounds like a bad kid, bad seed. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap up Frank Jacobs till next time. Thank you, Frank Jacobs. Yes, thank you. Um, we'll hear more from you. Thank you, everybody. You. So, anybody out there listening, if you have a, a topic or a story idea you have for us, maybe some love mail, maybe some hate mail, because we love that too, uh, send it to us, candyteethradio at gmail.com, or feel free to post on our Facebook page. Invite your friends, you know. Tell them you found this funny new podcast. Share it with them. It's <laughs> really <laughs> Uh, don't, don't worry if you're not as funny as us when you're describing the podcast uh, to them. Sorry. <laughs> and hey, see you at the trees. <laughs> Stay alive. Stay alive. <laughs>